In this second part of the briefing on the September 2008 Public Forum Resolution, we'll cover a broad topic overview. We will examine the uh, philosophical, the military, political, and social consequences of the draft. In the final installment will deal with the possible strategies on uh, how to deal with this resolution. Let's look at the topic. Resolved that the United States should implement a military draft. Clearly U.S. specific. Not as the military draft a good thing in society, but for the United States. However, you should look at compulsory military service in other countries as well. South Korea and Israel would be good examples to look into. Now notice it says implement. This is not the current system of selective service. This is a new thing. The military draft. Now this is a slippery term. There are two different purposes of the military. There's the traditional view of the uh, citizen soldier involved in violent conflict, but there's also the new view that has uh, taken place since the 1990s that the military is also used as a extension of American soft power, non-military power, non-violent power, in nation building and humanitarian service. Now at first blush this is a really tough resolution because Iraq comes to mind immediately. And Iraq is not an unpopular war, it is an unpopular peace. Death tolls are announced every uh, newscast and the concern of uh, the American people about the long-term nature of Iraq has created uh, a situation where it is a highly political uh, topic. Democratic midterm gains in 2006 uh, destroyed the Republican uh, majority in the House and the Senate, primarily due to, at that time, Iraq. And low presidential and congressional approval ratings have been linked directly to dealing with the issue of how to get out of Iraq. New ad campaigns on demanding the front lines indicate that Americans are hypersensitive to the concept of sustained military involvement. Yet, we have to realize that long-term wars and smaller conflicts than huge battlefield scenarios are a reality in a post-Cold War world. Whether it is through uh, directly or through proxies of the UN or NATO, the United States military has become more and more involved since the end of the Cold War than it ever has before. We also need to look at the future and the need to uh, prosecute military actions in a sustained scale through occupation and nation building are more and more likely. Push button wars are less and less. More, it's interesting to note that the current proponents of the military draft aren't on the right, but they're on the left. They are, uh, generally speaking, uh, opponents of the Iraq War. They have proposed the draft and keep on proposing it on the belief that a universal draft or the fear thereof will crystallize resistance to an unpopular war. In 2003, Democratic Congressman Charlie Rangel uh, tried to institute a draft. Uh, however, the Republican majority, through parliamentary procedure, managed to defeat the uh, Proposition 402 to 2. In 2006, Charlie Rangel again called for the draft. Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejected the debate because it would be too divisive. However, in 2007, uh, Representative Rangel is back with the U Universal National Service Act, H.R. 393. The important concept of H.R. 393 is that it offers no deferments for educational deferments. And it uh, extends uh, the military service up until the age of 40. So it is primarily a political tool to crystallize opposition. Whether or not it is real is another matter. Now that's the topic analysis. Let's look at the philosophical challenges to the military draft. The military draft in the history of the United States has always been unfair. Always. From the Civil War opt-outs uh, to uh, the educational deferments of the Vietnam War, uh, that generally speaking the draft has disfavored uh, the uneducated, the poor, and minorities. Additionally, and this is good for female debaters, that it is a sexist paradigm. Women are exempted from military service. It is a, however, there's a double-edged sword to the military draft. Uh, as uh, Thomas Paine said, obviously the tree of liberty must be watered by the blood of patriots. 
The danger philosophically of the all volunteer force, it is a separate military that's run by professionals, separate from the body politic. The people, notice capitalization, have less say and less stake in military actions without the draft. It is one thing to look at the costs of a military action, how much the Iraq war and how much our, inv our occupation of Afghanistan cost. But budget numbers at the federal level are mostly science fiction. They're huge, people can't get a grasp on them. It is another thing to look at, to put your son's or daughter's face to the military action. It becomes more real. It is argued that the professional military has become an extension of the imperial presidency. That the separation of the military from society uh, has allowed that foreign policy goals of the executive branch can become much wider and uh, the, the, citizen, the uh, soldiers fight at the commands of the commander-in-chief. It is the separation of the military from society as well because it relieves citizens' obligations to directly contribute to their country's defense where the all-volunteer force creates a concept that fighting and dying for others is something that you can buy, that pay for in taxes, uh, much like a service economy. So in other words, whether or not uh, we're doing this through military contractors or we're doing this through the military, we're paying for it for our taxes. Uh, therefore, the personal stake is becoming less and less. Now, there's a military concept to the draft. The military concept is going to be a tough one, but it's possible to argue that there are more conflicts in the future that are sustained, less battlefield scenarios. In other words, it won't be so much tanks racing across a desert or airstrikes, but it will be nation building. We'll either do this directly as in Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, formerly, uh, uh, or we'll do it indirectly through the UN. The current humanitarian crisis in Sudan will eventually have to get dealt with. Now this is a view that we have to think of that there's a less traditional concept of the military than to kill people and break things. Rather, as Secretary of Defense Robert Gates put it in, in October 2007, the purpose of the military is reviving public services, rebuilding infrastructure, and promoting good governance has become the soldier's business. All these so-called non-traditional capabilities have moved into the mainstream of military thinking, planning, and strategy, strategy where they must stay. Now, currently, the uh, do, uh, the doing the job uh, we're currently doing this job of nation building a lot of it through primary uh, through uh, military contractors such as Blackwater but military contractors are incredibly expensive and as we've seen in the abuses with Blackwater it's something to look up they are less accountable than traditional military and more open for abuse we have to think now of the military occupations of the Philippines of the 1900s and Central America uh, states in the 1920s Afghanistan and Iraq are both tenuous. The all-volunteer force has stretched the breaking point. Occupation and reconstruction are manpower intensive. It does not allow the United States at the same time to deal with threats to peace caused by North Korea and Iran. It does not allow the U.S. to respond to the humanitarian crises in the United, in uh, obviously in Sudan, but also we've seen some in uh, uh, Myanmar. Now. There's political contract, uh, consequences to the draft. By having the draft, politics is no longer a spectator's sport. It will force Americans to come face to face with ending or upholding an unpopular war. It will force congressmen to define wartime responsibilities more than spending bills. And it is believed that perhaps a political consequence of the draft would, it would, redu uh, would restore checks and balances. The check from the legislative to the executive branch forcing uh, less of an interventionist presidency. There are social contra uh, consequences to the draft as well. And this is where we'll end the discussion for this briefing. Currently, the all-volunteer force is heavy in rural Americans, minorities, and recent immigrants. It's a blue-collar military. Many college-educated are not opting for military service. A draft would spread, conceivably, the burden among the upper and middle class. The next briefing we will discuss in-depth approach towards strategy and some final words.